Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you an update on my personal trading account where I've been trading a mixture of Forex and cryptocurrencies. I'm going to share with you a breakdown of all of the trades that I've taken this week and how I managed to finish up 2% on my account. So let's jump onto the charts. <laughs> Hey guys, so here I am in my broker with Vantage in MetaTrader 4 and I'm just going to share with you an update on the trades that I've taken. So this is for the last week of April. Um, if you've been following my journey, you'll know that I have been recently trading a lot of prop firm challenges. So this is actually the first week that I've had back in trading my personal trading account with real money. And I'm really happy to say that I've managed to finish up green on the week. So I've made just over £100 on the week or 2% if we're thinking in percentage terms. Usually I risk around about 1% of my overall account per trade. However, because this is the first week back trading my personal account, I decided to start off more conservatively in terms of risk. And I've actually been risking half a percent per trade. So if I'd have used my usual risk, I would have probably made 4% on my account, but I'm still happy making 2% as it stands this week. So if we jump into account history here, and um, I'll just make this bigger, and you can see at the beginning of this period of data, um, I had a trade on Bitcoin against the dollar. So let's have a little look at that one first. So here is a chart screenshot of the trade that I took for Bitcoin. And I was actually in this trade for quite a while. I got into this um, at around about this point here. I had a buy limit order set and it got triggered. Um, so I held this for just over a week and I actually closed this position on the previous Friday. Uh, because as you can see, it wasn't really doing too well. I think I got into the trade a bit early really and it was in the red it was not quite at my stop but i decided to close it just before the weekend because i thought that if we got the momentum that i was looking for to the long side i can always get back into this trade but until that happens i didn't want to hold on to it and it turned into a loser so i chose to close it to manage the risk on my account now although this is my strategy trading price action and i was using although this is a four hourly time frame i was using the daily as a higher time frame for this analysis and I measured the previous reaction leg, applied it to the high and looked to get an entry around that level. And the reason I got in there was because we had this big bullish candle up here of momentum and it did work out for the most part until I hit previous structure and decided to fall and this swing did not hold. So we are still working it out. It may range for a little bit before it's ready to turn. But overall, I am interested in long for Bitcoin and I'm certainly keeping an eye on it to get back into it with a long position. But I want to wait for it to show that the buyers are back into control before I get back into this pair. The next trade on this list, Pound Australian. Now, this was actually my worst trade of the week in terms of trade management. And you can see here that I actually made a very tiny profit of 32 pence, which basically paid for the commission and the swap fee. So... Why was it the worst trade you're probably thinking? Well, you will certainly know what I mean when you see the chart. Now here is the screenshot for Pound Australian and I took a long position on this. Now, when I got into this trade, I felt like I had my analysis spot on. I got in at the right time. And for the most part, the trade was looking really well. In fact, it was up just over three R at one point during this trade. So that's three times what I was risking for this trade. If that was a 1% risk, I was up over 3% on this trade. But my profit target for this trade was actually 5R. You see, I was aiming for a retest of this major structural level. I thought that price had the potential to reach that, so I had my target set up there. But as you can see, price didn't get that far up before it came back down. Now, at this point, I had already altered my stop loss and trailed it to break even. The truth is, guys, I actually trailed my stop loss to 1R once price crossed over this structural level here. You see this line here that says trailed stop? I was trailing this up into profit. But when we got this big bearish candle, I decided to bring my stop back down to break even because I thought that maybe it needed a little bit more room to sort itself out. Unfortunately, that backfired on me because price came down and hit my break even stop, which meant that I didn't make any money on this trade pretty much. It happens, it is break even at least, it could have been a loss, but it's break even. 
but it's certainly a lesson learned for me on that, which is to respect what you do in a trade, respect your plan. The fact I trailed my stop meant that I should have respected that and left it alone. But as it stands, this trade opportunity is still active because as you can see here, we had this large green momentum candle and on the daily time frame, price has just come back down and retested this area, found strength and seems to be pushing back up. So as an overall trade idea, it's still active. I still consider this to be a good trade. I just didn't manage it very well, hence I'm out of the trade. Moving on, let's have a look at this trade here that I took on Australian dollar CAD. Now this was a short and this ended with a really nice winner. So this was a 2R winner. I made 50 quid on this, which was basically two times what I was risking for this position. So here is a screenshot for Australian dollar Canadian dollar. Again, all of these trades that I'm recapping with you use the swing trading strategy that I use. It uses the four hour time frame and the daily. It utilizes trading price action and utilizes techniques that I learned with my mentorship, uh, during my mentorship with the story of price. I do share a lot more about my swing trading strategy in other videos. So make sure you subscribe below and part of the channel and follow it so that you don't miss out on those videos. So this trade here on Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, I was originally long biased. You may have noticed that price is moving up and I have measured this reaction like measurement here, these blue lines. And that's what I've plotted here at the bottom, this blue line, that's where I thought price may come back to for a pullback. But looking in this area here, this uh, almost looks like a head and shoulders pattern because we go up here and comes down. That's why I drew this dotted line. Price made a new high, breaking this previous high here. It came back down to the started line level and it pushed up again, but wasn't able to continue that uptrend and instead it broke this line or the shoulders of the move. Well, technically the neck of the move, it formed the right shoulder here. So once price dropped below this line, I thought that there was a potential for a retest of this level and a short, which is exactly what I did. Um, as you can see, I got in here just below this red doji on the Frowley and price dropped quite nicely to my target. Another trade that I took this week, and this was my only real loss on the account for the week, was a buy order on Swiss Yen. Now I actually took this trade right at the beginning of the week and I was trying to go for a continuation trade following the uptrend. So as you can see, price has made a very strong move up. Once again, this is on the Friday time frame. And very simply, I just measured these reaction leg lengths. I actually measured the previous one here, which is the minor because it is smaller. Applied that to the high and that's what this green line was here. And as we started to get a couple of whip rejections here and price made this bullish pin bar, that's where I set my buy order for an entry long. But as you can see, price came down, it triggered my order, but unfortunately went straight down to my stop. So it just needed some more time to pull back uh, before that actually worked out. And we only have a couple more trades to go through, so let's just carry on now. And the next one is a winning trade on New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, a short. This was a lovely trade, uh, but since I got out of this trade, since it hit my profit target, price continued to fall in the direction that I was in. Um, so it's one of those examples where I could have probably made more money, but I followed my trading plan, which is more important, and continue to learn from these experiences. So as you can see here, once again on the Farley time frame, New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, and price has been consolidating here, and then it's been selling off, and I was just looking for a continuation of this nice downtrend. I used this previous minor reaction leg measurement and I applied it to the low here. That's what this green line represents. Once we got this really nice bearish engulfing candle here, that's where I set a sell limit. So I was looking for a retest just below that level. We got the retest here with this second bearish engulfing candle that triggered me in and almost immediately price fell to my take profit. So this is one of those lovely textbook trades where you are triggered into a trade, you're not in drawdown and it pretty much goes to profit straight away. It doesn't happen all the time for me, but it certainly feels really good when it does. And the last couple of trades here. So this is the last winner of the week and this was a buy order on Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. I actually took a slightly smaller profit on this trade. I was in this trade, um, I think I got into it on the Wednesday and I decided to close the position on the Friday just before the weekend. I was originally looking to get a target, a retest of this line here. So I was originally aiming for about a two or three R 
profit. But once price was already in profit and it started to get this consolidation along the highs, we were struggling to break the highs, I saw that as an exit indicator. That combined with the fact that it was a Friday and that I was already over one hour profit, I thought, let's not be greedy, let's just take the profit, walk away, come back Monday morning refreshed and ready for a new week. So that's what I did and I still managed to make 1.5R on this trade. And lastly, this is probably uh, one of my best trades of the week in terms of trade management, even though as you can see, it is another break even. In fact, it was a very, very small loss if you consider the fees here. Uh, but this was a short position taken on Australian dollar Swiss. And as I said before, I think I managed this trade really quite well. Let's see if you agree. So here is a screenshot of the trade and it's quite similar to the other order I showed you for Australian dollar um, where we were consolidating along this line here, this blue line that I've marked. And it's once again, it's that head and shoulders pattern. We've got the left shoulder here, we've got the head in the middle and then the right shoulder because it didn't break the head. I mean, I don't tend to use set pattern names. I'm referring to head and shoulders because a lot of people will recognize that if I use that terminology. But personally, I prefer to look at what the structure actually represents and means rather than the name. And all this is basically showing is that the final, the third and final attempt here to make a high failed. It didn't break the high and then it broke this key structural level here. So once we were getting the retest to the structure, that's where I was interested in getting short. After this first initial retest where price pushed up and then it made two bearish candles coming back down, I set a sell order here with a stop above that level and my target down below. Now, as you can see, once I got triggered in, I was actually in drawdown for quite a while here and then price started to fall into profit. And it was after this little green, this little red doji candle here that I actually trailed a very tight stop. Why did I do that? Well, because we'd been consolidating and initially this candle that triggered my entry short was a strong bullish candle. They were already a couple of exit indicators for me. So I decided that once price made this red candle here on the Frowley, technically if my trade was going to work, price should have just started to fall into profit. So I figured that if I trailed my stop right down here, it would be the high of that candle. If price was going to break the high of that candle, then the probability is it was going to continue up anyway to my stop. That's why I moved it to break even. And I'm glad I did because as you can see, after that, we got this really strong candle up. And if that didn't take me out from the spread to my broker, then obviously this second push would have taken me off. So I managed to save myself a loss on this trade by getting out break even. So that's a very uh, quick roundup of all the trades that I took last week and how I managed to make just over £100 on this account or 2%. I'm going to continue, uh, hopefully continue with this nice momentum and make some more profits. And then as I feel more comfortable getting to the swing of things, pun not intended, then I might consider upping my risk back to my usual 1% per trade. But for now, I'm just happy and grateful to start to make some real money. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like below so that I know to make more content like this one. And make sure you're also subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on my other videos. Any questions or any comments, leave them below and I'll catch you on my next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.